Yellow Gary next. Would a fractional reserve system occur under the total free market banking? If not, why not? Uh, no, uh, it wouldn't. Um, because if people knew how fractional reserve banking worked, they'd never put their money in a bank. The only reason people put their money in a bank is they think it's safe because they don't understand how banking works. Um, but if they knew that, they'd never do it. And in a free market, in a free market, <clears throat> it would be very made clear by other sorts of banks, new style banks, um, deposit taking banks, uh, who would come to the marketplace and say, look, put your money in our bank, you will have to pay a fee because we keep it safe for you, your money. What we won't do is lend it on uh, to bad uh, into, and turn it into bad debts and go broke, which is what's happening at the moment. So a free, a free market in banking wouldn't tolerate fractional reserve banking because the market, other people coming into the market would expose it uh, and that would blow it away because it's all based on a Ponzi scheme. It's a Ponzi scheme. Uh, uh, and uh, if we all turned up to our bank tomorrow and wanted our money back, they simply wouldn't have it. And they bet they don't have it. Even under the regulations Basel III, they only have to have less than 10% uh, of what is actually in there. So it's a recipe for absolute disaster. Free market, and then people can make their mind, and we must bring back into banking, caveat emptor. <clears throat> we must get rid of this idea, oh, it's got a little regulatory stamp on it. Regulated by whoever it aimed at. You're on the bottom, regulated by the... No, that's no good to you at all. That's rubbish. Uh, what you need is caveat emptor. It's up to you to be careful where you put your money. What do you do with your money? You to do some research. Make an effort. Don't expect the man next door who works for the regulatory authority to do it for you. He won't. He'll look after himself. So, yeah, you have to really make an effort. Uh, and we've seen that, have we not? It's not just I mean, it's, it's, it's turning up now in COVID, isn't it? Suddenly, suddenly we're seeing that what every, everything we were told isn't true. It isn't true that the vaccines were safe, they stopped transmission, they stopped you getting it. All lies, and the people telling you about banks and money are the same people, and they're the same people telling you about the climate emergency. There is no climate emergency. It's a hoax. So they can add tax, they can add power, they can do this, they can do that. And I've got another web page, not just on gold, on how you can drill down and find out about that. It's another enormous hoax. If you're going to go forward in life, and if you're any youngsters listening to this, don't trust anybody. Do your own homework. You must do your own homework. Trust no one. Liam wants to know, does crypto fit into the future? Uh, yes, I think it does. It does in some format. Uh, I believe that it does. But it has to be hard-backed. It can't be an ephemeral kind of magic a digital type of thing, certainly not run by central banks and politicians. It has to be, crypto has to be <coughs> backed with something, and I would suggest gold or silver. Uh, gold or silver, so that uh, when you've got your X crypto coins, you know that you can exchange crypto coins for real uh, money, which is gold or silver. Just to give you a quick alliteration on that, and you may or may not know this, if you go to Las Vegas, if you go into one of the big casinos and you cash in your dollars for your plastic chips, it is part of the Las Vegas and Nevada gaming law that they must have in the vault a dollar for every piece of plastic. All right? That's how it works. And if you think about it, the plastic chips you get are a sort of crypto when you go into the casino to play in the casino, to play the wheel or play cards. They are not allowed to issue plastic unless it's backed by downstairs in the bullion, uh, in, in the vault uh, with dollars. They're not allowed to do that. And crypto has to be the same. You shouldn't be allowed to issue crypto unless it's backed in a vault somewhere with some hard asset. Whatever the hard asset, it might be gold, it might be silver, it might be... It might be land, it, you know, it might be property, it might be something, but it can't be just something that's been conjured out of thin air. XJPR, how long have we got before the public debt bubble bursts? Will we face a crash of a currency crisis burst? And what are the key metrics to keep an eye on? Well, <clears throat> it's an interesting concept, the bubble bursting. 
we now have in this country, we have three trillion and growing every year debt, national debt. It's growing and growing apace. We haven't balanced our current account as a nation since 1989. So it goes on and it goes on. And people are under the impression that somehow uh, a nation is different to you or your family or a small business, that you can go on borrowing and spending, but it, it, it doesn't matter. We still have that thinking today. <clears throat> we have that thinking with Sunak and Hunt, the Chancellor, and it was ever thus, that it's public money there, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you can spend it because they, all they do is turn on the tap because they've got a machine in the loft which actually prints money. So it doesn't focus their mind. It's something that we can't do, families can't do, small businesses can't do. Uh, so really, you might argue that the currency, the, the, the national debt's already burst because it's beyond human imagination what it, what it is. Three trillion is beyond human Im imagination. It's already growing. The question is, I suppose, is one day you'll wake up and it will be like the Weimar Republic and that burst will take place. You'll get into your cab or you'll go into your pub with your five or your 10 or your 15 pound note to buy a round of drinks or 20 pounds uh, whatever it is to buy a round of drinks. And the landlord will say, no, nah, mate, got anything else? That's a nice watch or that's a nice jacket or something like that. I don't want that. That's just paper. It's intrinsically worthless. That's when it actually bursts. And by Jove, by Jove, we're getting close to that already, aren't we? Only going to London. I was boozing with my nephew the other day in London. It's over five pounds a pint in London. Five pounds for a pint of bitter. You know, it's burst, isn't it? It's burst. Uh, so the question is, uh, it's a slow burst. It's a slow burst. It's not a big bang theory. It's a slow burst. Suddenly nothing works anymore. And that's the way I think uh, uh, it's going to go. Will it get better? Will it get better? Now, here's a disappointing thing, is that whenever you have a national crisis, whether it's the French Revolution or whether it's the uh, Russian Revolution or whatever it happens to be, these, these revolutions... You don't, people don't come like I say, oh, it was the government that made that happen. Um, what we need is less government. What we, we don't need government. Government created this. Every single problem in your life and your family's life is created by politicians. Every single one. There is no exception. The problem that you have in your life is created by politicians. And that is where we uh, have the problem that when we go through this next crisis, people will vote for a more totalitarian state as if it isn't totalitarian enough already. That's where you get your Hitlers, your Stalins, your Francos, your Mussolinas. That's where they come from, from the ashes of collapse. And that is what's going to happen because it gets so bad uh, that uh, you have to, uh, eventually somebody comes to the fore uh, who's going to deal with it in a very, very, very nasty way. Question from David. Should the system collapse, and sooner or later it will, what will that mean? And what will come after? More of the same or something much more sane? No, we're not going to get anything sane. Um, it's insanity that drove us to this. And I think what will happen is just more insanity will follow. All you can do is protect your... It's time to hunker down and protect you and your family. <clears throat> and that's whether that's... Uh, just looking ahead, knowledge protects your family. What's happening in the financial markets? What's happening in the commercial markets? What's actually happening? Open your eyes. Never, ever, ever, I say again, look at the BBC. The BBC will never tell you. Sky News, Channel 4, your newspapers will never tell you. You really have to sit down and think for yourself uh, and then do what you need to do in order to do the best for your family. And you won't find it from anybody else. Nobody else can help you. Only you can do it. What is the difference between Austrian economics and Chicago economics? <clears throat> That's a question that if you are an undergraduate, you could do your dissertation on. That would be a 10,000 word dissertation, believe me. But to give you the short answer, and again, if I may use it, what's the difference between Islam and Christianity? All right. What is the fundamental difference? The fundamental difference that can't be uh, got round in any way. Or Christianity and Judaism, for example. And that is that Islam and Judaism do not accept Jesus Christ as the son of God. They accept him as a prophet, but not the son of God. And there's your fundamental difference. 
Now, with Chicago School Economics, it's very much more free market bias than Keynesian School Economics, which is a disaster, which is all you get taught if you're at school at university by the numpties uh, who are teaching economics today in the public domain. Why are they teaching economics in the public domain? Because they're losers and they can't get a job anywhere else. It's a lot of brutal truth about it, isn't it? Uh, so this is the problem. Uh, Keynesianism is away with the fairies. The Chicago score is monetarism, based about monetarism, and they believe that you can control the supply of money in line with whatever's happening in the economy. The difference with Austrian school economics is they don't believe that. The Austrian school economists believe that there is no substitute for hard money and that politicians have no part to play in the creation of money, it must be hard money, it must be gold, it must be silver, it must be hard money. And just to leave you with this one, when we were on the gold standard after the Napoleonic Wars uh, in 1816, 1817, we went back on the gold standard, the, talking about getting back to inflation, the price of a loaf of bread in, nine, in, in 1817 was exactly the same as it was in 1930, all right? Nearly 100 years, the staple diet didn't move in price at all. And why is that? Because gold was money, gold was hard currency, you couldn't turn on the spigot and create inflation. So everything, and who benefited from that? Old age pensioners benefited from that. Old people, poorly paid people, all right? It's ordinary people. Inflation crucifies those people who don't have the levers of power at their hand and don't have much to start with. That's, uh, that's why uh, Klaus Schwab, uh, Bill Gates and all these, but they don't care about inflation because it doesn't affect them. Hunt isn't affected by inflation. Public sector uh, pensioners aren't. It's, it's index inked. If you're an ordinary guy, old age pension or, or struggling on the minimum wage or a small businessman, you're the ones that get screwed, but you're the ones that don't have a political voice. That's the long and short of it. I'm an Austrian school economist, by the way, as you probably know. Uh, so I believe in hard money uh, because hard money in the marketplace is the friend uh, of the poor man. Uh, as most of you know, my work is very heavily independently research based uh, and I get my information from all over the world. It would help if you press the subscribe button and the little bell next to it because the more subscribers I have, uh, the more likely it is that international uh, independent research institutes will share their material with me. It's most helpful and then of course I'll automatically share it with you. Uh, so, surprise, won't cost you anything. Uh, thank you very much.